Well, let's stand in the presence of the Lord this evening. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. Well, Lord, we're here once again, Father, in your presence, Lord. It's a new day for us, Lord. It's a new season. It's a new chapter, Father. We want more. That's why we're here, because we're hungry, Father. When people are hungry, Father, they'll be here. They'll show up, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you, Father, for the anointing. Oh, the glory of the Lord is in this place. Come on, just right there where you're at, just begin to give him your worship right now. Worship him. Worship. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. Everybody knows this song. Just sing with me just a few. Hallelujah. That's right.
That's great. Be seated. We, uh, we are going back into praise and worship here in a few moments. I just want to get some housekeeping things done and get them out of the way so we can just stay in that presence and let the Spirit have His way. I just uh, want to encourage you that we have uh, this New Day theme for Transformation Conference this year is very... Uh, well, it's been confirmed by prophets, so I, I, I'm amazed about uh, Chuck Pierce is one of them, talking about the new day. Now, we thought this theme up in December of last year, so the new day is being confirmed by even prophets about, well, are we willing to walk in a new day? And I think a lot of people today need to embrace the fact that it's a new day without bringing in yesterday, without looking at tomorrow, but understand this day, the Father has something that's very unique and specifically for you because he brings you here and it's a new day. And so I just want to encourage you and we want to welcome you here to Transformation Conference and, and the truths that we've been receiving and them the demonstration of the spirit we've been experiencing and that, you know, I, I look back and said, I didn't realize sometimes being obedient to the spirit, you don't realize what you're doing. You're just being obedient. And so what happened is, is I scheduled an evangelist and a teacher. And uh, which would you bring first? And so, so what happened is, you got evangelized so that you can get in a place of renewing yourself so you can get the word. And uh, we have a, a man, Dr. Stevens, that is going to be bringing a word. But he's a teacher. He's, he's had the office of pastor, but he's a teacher. And so I don't know what all that means. Because a lot of times we have preachers and we have pastors. But see, I think we're living in a time that we need to start recognizing what the Word of God says. In Ephesians 4.11, he said, I sent the five in ministry to equip the saints. And so we, just being obedient to the Spirit, he has made it available for us to have an evangelist, a true evangelist that's pastoring. And then we have... Uh, the uniqueness of Dr. Stevens because he is a host in uh, the Victory News channel, but yet he served as a pastor, and yet he is very learned. He is uh, working on his doctorate in Hebrew. So I'm not so sure that he won't somewhere in the middle of this start speaking Hebrew, but it'll be okay. He'll translate it for us, and so it'll, it'll be okay. But we, we just want to welcome you here today, most of all because it's the presence of God that we want to come to. In His presence, the anointing can move in the nine gifts. But even in that anointing, as we look at the anointing and how it affects the body, because it also says in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, that you are part of a body that as the Spirit moves, that it can touch every member of the body to manifest gifts in the Spirit. So we're positioning ourselves, and it's time for the church to line up with the Word and function as it's supposed to without having to perform or without having the duty, but allowing the Spirit to lead you into that position and let us be observant of what the Spirit is doing. So that's why we're here. Um, and I want to see, do we have any, we've had some pastors from different locations. Do we have any pastors uh, from any location here tonight? Other than, it looks like most of us are home folks. We have some guests, so it's good. And, uh, <clears throat> well, I, uh, I just, uh, you know, as you mature in life, you look at things like this and the opportunity you have. But I, I recall the, the first one we had, and uh, it is no way the same. 
And what I mean by that is the anointing in someone that's steadfast in a ministry continues to grow. In other words, what we did the first in the first transformation is nowhere compared to what the Spirit is doing in this conference. Back then, it was me and praise and worship. But today, we're having fulfillment of the Word of God because we have a teacher that's going to come in the office of teacher. And I don't know how many churches now are recognizing the office that is scripturally sound that says, okay, what does that mean? And so we are learning things about the Word of God that said we've not experienced it. So what, what, what do you mean that, that the evangelist is here? How many agree that uh, Jay Hoskins is an evangelist? Because he brought forth a, a, a message with a lot of humor and a lot of dynamics to it. And so we're, we're getting ready for uh, the things. But the most important thing, as I said, is we want to be in God's presence. But our destination in His presence is His glory. And not a lot of people know about how getting to that glory. We have a measure of it. But the glory is something that's it's unlimited. There's no end of God's glory. And that's the bright light a lot of people see as God's glory. And so we're in the training and equipping. That's why we have Transformation Conference, Word of Spirit Conferences, because we're working to a destination. All of us have a destination that's the same, and that's God's glory. Some may call it heaven, but we don't know really all that there is about heaven. So we've got the scriptures and stuff. But heaven, in that process of the heaven, you will see His glory. You will experience His glory. And so that's the things that we're excited about the conference today. And so I, I just want to recognize that. And, and also, um, I think what we have is uh, when you come in, we want to uh, recognize uh, and we have a drawing because you've got, the, you've got the gift and everything else for people that uh, have come in. And so we, we're doing this. I'm looking for someone... <coughs> Kaida Bowery use you, so I'm looking for somebody else. And so um, I'm looking around. Who can we get? Tina. All right. Wait, me... but... no. Good evening. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, we have uh, for the drawing, those that don't know, I, this is my third and last time. To demo <laughs> uh, a shirt, uh, coffee, coffee cup. Um, this is oh Tammy Hoskins CD, a, a prayer journal, a wonderful book. Yeah, Kenneth Copeland and Greg Stevens on um, Blood Covenant. This this will enrich your life greatly. Thank you, Jan's favorite. <laughs> See, I'm, I've got him trained, y'all. <laughs> y'all are going to miss this, aren't you? Yes, last one. Okay. And this is Tina, and she is helping us. I love it. say the schedule um, for tomorrow will be at um, the church at 10 o'clock in the morning with uh, Dr. Greg Stevens. 10 o'clock, the address is 53rd in Elgin. Uh, um, then tomorrow night will be 6 o'clock, not 7, but 6 o'clock. We'll have prayer at 5 and then um, 
um, at 6 o'clock, 53rd and Elgin. So everybody's invited. Bring all of your friends, your relatives. I don't know. Your, um, no dogs. No, no, no. Oh. Go ahead and bring okay. your tios and your tias. Rogelito and Maganito. Bring them all. Uh, uh, bring your enemies and <laughs> we'll make them your friends. We'll get them saved. <laughs> Thank you, Jan. That's good. I, uh, I want you to know that our church is a family church and so we like to do these things. We're not proper. Although there's nothing wrong with being proper. But we just enjoy the life we chose when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. When we accepted Him, we came into a kingdom. We came in a way of living. We're not waiting for something to come. We already have it because we accepted Him. And it's a journey with Him. It's, it's a, joint, a joint life. And, and we enjoy being with Him because... The only thing that's going to happen is you're transitioning from this earthly body into something else. Because when you accept Jesus Christ, you never die. You're not going to experience death. Your body will wear out. Your body will go. But you won't. And so we need to embrace the life from a choice we made when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And what's most important is, it's a lifestyle. It's not responsibility or duties. There are commands. There are promises. But you made a choice when you accepted Jesus Christ to follow Him. And in doing so, He has a progression in your salvation and your journey. But most of all, you have a purpose that God created you for to exist on this earth. Hoping that one day that you will come to know His Son that He gave for us. And knowing that means we have a lifestyle that we're living. And in that lifestyle is why we have conferences. To explain to you the journey that you're on. And we're all on a journey because we made a choice to accept Jesus Christ. And in this journey, you're going to have opportunities to grow and to mature in the things of God. And so when you do that, it's not something that you have to do. It's something you get to do because you made that choice. And so I'm just telling you a little bit about the conference and letting you know that we have a purpose. You have a purpose. I believe you're here because you had a thought to be here. Now, what you did in that thought, you became obedient. And you showed up. To me, because this is a godly thing, you heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's not any difference when you accepted Jesus Christ. When you accepted Him, did you not have a thought to accept Him? You just just didn't, by, by your intellect, just do something. You had a thought. And look at what obedience will do to a thought that's the Holy Spirit changes your life and so tonight that's what we want you to do in the praise and worship and getting in his presence I didn't want you to come to reflect on yesterday I didn't want you to be planning for tomorrow but you will have thoughts in the time of getting in his presence that you want to bring captive. And those thoughts, whatever that is, even tonight or whatever it is, I want you to bring your thoughts captive and say, I'm here to be in your presence. And I want to give you my all by bringing my thoughts captive so that I can worship you and praise you. In doing so, you're entering into the glory. And so that's what I want to encourage you to do. Before we do that, we want you to give you an opportunity not to give your tithes, but to sow into an offering to the conference. We actually don't charge anything, but we ask you to just be sensitive to the Spirit and sow into His kingdom what He's doing in the equipping of your life so that you can function today and tomorrow. And so 
I want to pray for you as you uh, listen to the Spirit. And our, our men will come and receive your offerings tonight. Because the offerings, I, I, what the Word says and what the Father says in His Word is that the windows of heaven or the windows to prosperity, the windows of giving will be open. And when those windows are open, He'll pour out more than you can contain. But don't steal from the tithes. The tithes belongs to your church, but give into the kingdom. So, Father, I pray for these tonight. They have an ear to hear. They heard to be here. So, Father, I thank you that is they're there right now in their seat, that they're hearing. And I just pray, Father, that measurable results will come after the obedience to what they hear. It's not my hands, Father. It's in yours. We're doing what we're supposed to do by seeking you. It says, seek ye first the kingdom. Father, we're seeking you about our tithes or, or about our offerings. And Father, I just thank you that people tonight will have an ear to hear that will glorify you and the continuance of ministries through conferences. And we thank you for doing that in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Men, if you'll receive the offerings now, we will, we will continue on with the praise and worship. This is, a, this is to me, is, is the opportunity that you can have to worship your God and to relax in His presence and be refreshed and renewed in Him. So let's just stand as you, after you've given your Offerings, just stand and we're going to worship Him and praise Him. Father, I thank you tonight for Pastor James and the worship and praise team, the musicians, the vocals. Father, I look at them as the Levites. I also look at a psalmist that's going to sing. And Father, we release this team not to, to perform tonight, but to worship You. And they worship You, Father. They'll usher us in to your inhabitation of the praise and worship that you've blessed these people with, with talents and gifts, so they may return it back into you for your glory and your honor. So we thank you for the anointing tonight. That's what the worship that you inhabit. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.
But y'all don't sound convinced enough Say I know who I am Beyond the shadow of the doubt I know who I am Come on, put your hands together, church That's what we're here for To give them praises The word of God said Let everything that has breath What? Praise, praise the Lord. Lord I said let everything that has breath What? Praise, praise the Lord. Lord Here we go
Oh, come on, church now. Though. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're here to give you glory. Say that with me. I know who I am. Come on. I know who I am. I know who I am. I am yours. I am yours. I know who I am. That's right. I know who I am. I know who I am. I am yours, I am yours, and you are mine, Jesus, you are mine, you are mine, Jesus, you are mine, you are mine, Jesus, you are mine. You are mine, Jesus, you are mine. Mm. Worship you. Come on, tell sister. 
work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. One more time. We make a miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Hallelujah.
We worship you, Father. We worship you. Glory to you. Glory to you. Glory to you. We worship you. We glory. Hallelujah. Father. Abba, Father. Receive glory, Father. the Elohim. You're the creator. We magnify you. We give you glory. Receive from your children their praise and worship. to us in the now. He calls a vessel into a place to impart through the anointing. Not himself, but through the anointing that will bring a, an aroma to our Father. The Word that's anointed. Speak to us, Father. Give us the assignment that we may live the life that you set apart for us. Give us instruction. Give us insight. Give us understanding of just that little, that just that little piece of your glory. Thank you for Dr. Stevens that you bring into this place. He's a humble man, but he comes as a vessel anointed of you to impart life to the hearers. We thank you for his place and his purpose being an informer of things of life with Victory News on the Victory Channel. And Father, that's his purpose and place for now. But tonight, setting that aside, he comes as a vessel of yours to impart life and truth to us. We thank you, Father, for sending us a man who seeks humility to impart life. We thank you for bringing him. And we ask in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Dr. Stevens. Thank you. Wow. They ought to rename this place the Tabernacle of David. I mean, that's what you are. That's what you've tapped into. Uh, it's an honor to be back in Lubbock. It's an honor to be with you. Uh, yeah, okay. That's what I'm going to do.
Okay, before too many people go away, I want to demonstrate something. David, I need two bodies here and here. David moved the presence of God on, a, on an ox cart. They're right there? Okay, stand. I want to be able to see your shadow. Can you always, can I see your, okay, I see my shadow. No, wait. Where can I see your shadow? Okay, I need two shadows. Now they went away. I don't see your shadow now. Wait, I see yours now. Where'd hers go? Somewhere where I can get a shadow. Okay, good. There, I see them there and there. The presence of God was in the Ark of the Covenant. And David decides to move it. Now he's of the tribe of Judah. He's not a Levite. He's not a priest. So he puts it on an ox cart and moves it by an ox cart. You know the story, yes? And as he moves it, it, if you've ever been, anybody been to Israel? It's rocks everywhere. And so they're trying to move the presence of God on an ox cart, boards and big wheels. You can't operate the presence of God with boards and big wheels. Pastors, you can't operate the presence with boards and big wheels. Big wheels and boards don't know how to flow with the presence. It's far too many times. And this guy puts his hand up there and he touches it and he dies, cost them by their life because he was listening to boards and big wheels. And so he says, what do we do? And they brought him the scrolls and they began to study. They stopped. They began to study. This is how the presence is carried. It's on the shoulders of the priest. The priests carry the presence, not the boards and the big wheels. I don't know why I keep driving that home. But the priests are the ones that carry. Now, in Christ Jesus, we've been made kings and priests. You're carriers of the presence. So David's tabernacle, do you understand that Jesus himself <clears throat> would not have been able to see the Ark of the Covenant in his lifetime? He would have not been able to go in Jerusalem into the temple into the Holy of Holies. He wouldn't have been able to go into the holy place. He wouldn't have been able to go to the altar. He's not a Levite. He's not a Koinim in Hebrew. He is of Judah. He's a Judahite. He can't go into those places. Isn't that something? The very presence can't go into the presence because he doesn't have the right last name. He wasn't born in the right tribe. This is why he broke all of that down. He wants us to unite. Believers uniting together. And so David does something crazy. He moves the presence from the tabernacle, which was still there, and moves it to Jerusalem. He got it wrong. A guy lost his life. And then he realized, no, this is how we have to do it. The priests have to carry the presence on their shoulders. And they would take six steps. So here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. We stop. And they made a sacrifice. And they did. I don't know how far they had to go from that moment that that guy died. But for every six steps, they would make offering and sacrifice. They would make sacrifice every six steps until they got the presence to the place it's supposed to be in the tabernacle of David. Here's the difference. The tabernacle of David, which says, shall be restored, talking of our age and our day, it didn't matter what tribe you were from. It didn't matter if you were male or female. Do you understand how many women are in the room? And I'm, that's not a trick question. I'm not asking you to define what a woman is. If you don't know, look down. when you're in the shower. 
I'm sorry, I repented that, Lord. I'm sorry. That was, that was carnal. That was flesh. Six steps. Do you understand? None of you that raised your hand, women in the room, you wouldn't have been able to go into those places. But under the tabernacle of the David, male, female, Jew, Gentile could experience the presence. They just couldn't touch it. But they could experience it. And so David ascribed singers and scribes. He hosted the presence of God for 33 years of his reign. That's a coincidence number for him who has ears to hear. He hosted the presence. I've been to that place. They've discovered it in Jerusalem in the city of David. And you can see they found a whole lot of bones, sheep bones and ox bones and and a trough cut into the stone where, where the blood flowed and we see where it set. And I went, oh my God, this was the tabernacle of David. And when I was standing in the archaeological find, chills went all over me. Now, how else do we know it? They found, they found little pomegranates and bells inscribed. And they were been around the priest garments. They found names of priests that are in your Bible, written on tablets of stone. So we know this is it. This is where it was. It's near the Gihon Spring, which flows again, which didn't flow before. They found a stone that was like this and another stone like this that had been a pillow, it looked like. And I thought, Jacob. He brought it to the place of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Solomon will be anointed king at that very spot. And I'm standing there as, as the man's talking to me. I kind of lost track of what my friend, the, this uh, archaeologist, was saying because I'm like, scriptures are flying through my heads. When I say heads, I'm talking about my spiritual and my natural head. And so here's what happened. From the mistake he made till the time they get the presence there, there's a blood trail. So there's a blood trail all the way from your mistake to the presence. And so all of the people that were following the procession, and David will get there, and David will begin to dance as they enter the gates of Zion. He'll begin to dance. His wife at the time, Saul's daughter, makes fun of him. And he says, you haven't seen dance yet. You want to see dance? I'll show you dance. That she will be barren after that. There will never be anybody in the line of Saul in David's line or in his lineage. But there's a bloodline. From the mistake to here. There's a bloodline that's in your life too. From the presence all the way back to the very beginning. So he, ass he assigned scribes and he assigned singers and worshipers to be there all the time. David learned, I can't touch the presence. Now you and I can. We live in a different age. We're in the tabernacle that David restored, fulfilled. We're in the last days. This is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's tabernacle of David talk. And so when anybody would cry out to Jesus, Yeshua, Ben David, Jesus, son of David, Hesed, I'm saying it to you in Hebrew, I'm not speaking in tongues. He would stop immediately and heal them. Why? They're talking covenant. Covenant stops him like that. David learned. So here's what would happen. People would come in and they would begin to prophesy and sing in the presence. Now the reason I have you two here is you're the Ark of the Covenant. Turn this way, face her. Turn that way, face him. I need a wing out and I need a wing out. And we know that the mercy seat is here. Jesus will fulfill this when he's resurrected. Are your arms tired yet? Can you hang in there a minute? Jesus will fulfill this. If you'll read one of the accounts, it'll say that where the place where he had laid, there was an angel at the foot and an angel at the head. It's the Ark of the Covenant. They made the Ark of the Covenant with him laying there. And that's when the power went boom and rosy. He rose. 
because the presence was here. See, the presence would hover between here so that you can't control it and you can't control it. The minute you begin to control the presence, you'll lose it. No man controls it and he hovers above a mercy seat. So David understood, I can't touch this. I've learned that. But scribes would write down whatever you began to sing, whatever you began to prophesy. And people went in at all hours of the day and night. And a scribe was always on duty to just begin to write. I remember my Hebrew class from Hebrew University in Jerusalem. I missed a question and I argued with the rabbi. Rebbe, with all respect, I got this right. And he says, no! He finally got mad at me. I said, well, I disagree. Tell me again. And it was Psalm 23. I was supposed to say and write Psalm 23 in Hebrew. And I said, somebody help me. What, what's the answer? Psalm 23, how does it begin? The what is it? You're wrong. Anybody else? How does it begin? You're wrong. I missed it. They don't grade if you miss one word, one letter, one punctuation mark in Hebrew, you're, the whole thing's wrong when you're doing the word. And I said, Rebbe, then teach me. He said, it says, a psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd. You don't leave anything out. Aren't you glad that Life Christian University is not that strict? Are your arms tired? I forgot you. I apologize. Okay, chair of arrest. So, so look, here's what happened. So a scribe will write down everything you begin to prophesy, everything you begin to sing when you walk into the room, into the presence. I know I can't touch it, but now let's think about it. I can do what you guys were doing a moment ago. I can sit in the shadow of the almighty. See it? Yea, though I dwell in the shadow. David would come and sit in the shadow and lay down in the shadow. We're not in the shadow anymore. If any two of you, I need angel wings again. Thank you. If any two of you will gather together in my name, there am I what? That's what, that's what the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now dwells in you. It's a new day. Thank you. You can go be angels back there now. But, but listen, listen, listen. Yeah, thank you, thank you. The Spirit, if any two of you gather together in my name, there am I where? In the midst. You don't need all of Lubbock to be here to change Lubbock. Because if just you and I will get together and begin to speak about him, guess what? He's in the midst of us. I can't control him and you can't control him, but he's here. If any two of you shall agree together as touching anything, it shall be done of my Father which is in heaven. Guys, this is a new day. We live in the fulfillment of that. We don't have to kneel in the shadow anymore. We can boldly go to the throne of grace where the blood is. That's what I saw when you guys were kneeling on the floor a while ago. You were in the shadow of the Almighty. You guys have literally created the tabernacle of David, new covenant tabernacle of David in this city. And it won't go unnoticed, Pastor. It won't be hidden. Now, you've had, I love Jay, you have had a preaching machine <laughs> in here. And I thought, and now somebody that has a teacher's gift comes in behind that. How boring is that? <laughs> like, I don't want to follow that. 
But the Lord changed my assignment. I used to be a preacher. And he changed my assignment and gave me the anointing of a teacher. And now I can't get enough. Hallelujah. So here's what I'm supposed to do. How you're no longer accounted as righteous, you're righteous. How does the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Because you understand the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus still needs to take a shower and wear deodorant and brush their teeth. Please. I'm in this world. There's a problem that many believers have. They don't understand the path of how we got to where we are. We don't know what we shall be, but we know when we see him, we'll be like him. As he is, so are we in this world. We know those verses, yeah? Yes. So we know that we're seated with him in heavenly places. I'm seated with him in heavenly places, but I still have to deal with all this stuff. So how do I take... This is where I, I, I heard. How do I take what you've been experiencing in here out there? How do I take this Monday to where I work? Huh. And that's the Lord's assignment for me. All right? You ready? Yeah. Abba, I bless you. I love you. I honor you. I magnify you. You are great and greatly to be praised. There's none like you. You are the architect of the plan, the originator of it. And Jesus, you are the great son of the Most High. You are the executor of that plan. You are my covenant redemption. I thank you for that. And then Jesus, you said, it's good that you go away. We're like, what? That's insane. Stay. He said, no, I have to go because if I don't go, I can't send you the comforter, the Holy Spirit, who's with us now. Lord, I tell you this, he is everything you promised he would be and more. And I thank you, precious Holy Spirit. You've already been in this place, and you are in this place, and I sense you, and I know you, and I hear your voice. This is your service. May everything that is said and done from this moment forward into tomorrow bring glory to you and grace to the hearer. Hang on a second. Okay. Okay. In your name, amen. Amen. I heard this. Explain what happened this morning. Anybody wondering what happened this, or this afternoon? Okay, here's what happened. I've studied Hebrew for years, still do. The reason I studied it is because I had an encounter with Jesus. It's happened only twice. Where... I met him, I saw him, he talked to me. <laughs> and just the last one was a, a couple of years ago in my bedroom. I heard my name, I sat up, grabbed my glasses, and looked, and he's standing right there by the French doors in our room, at the end of the bed over there. And he said something to me that I'd been meditating on. And I looked at him, he looked at me, and I can see him as clear as I can see you. I mean, just the lights from outside. And I said, that's cool. And he goes, it is cool. <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's exactly what he said. It's cool. It is cool. And he goes, go back to sleep. I said, okay. Night, night. I laid down and went back to sleep. Somebody's like, you idiot. I won't say who said that to me. Why didn't you turn the light on? Why didn't you wake me up? Why didn't you, you know, why didn't you call us? Why didn't you, what does he look like? When you see him, you don't care about what he looks like. You're just fixed on him. The other time was a time he said, what do you want of me? I said, I want to be a disciple, just like John. Just like Peter, he said, this is what will be required of you. 
and he began to lay it all out, what would be required of me to walk in that. So that's why I began to learn Hebrew. So I wanted to hear what he sounds like the way John heard what he sounded like. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk to you about your identity a little bit. I'm going to talk to you about how to take this out there because it does us no good if it's in here. It's like having a bass boat and never taking it to the lake because there's stumps in the lake. And I don't want to hurt the bass boat. I don't want to scratch it. That's silly. Loan me your bass boat. Okay, in Matthew chapter 16, as I've studied his life as a modern day disciple, I found my own surprise that I questioned and wondered at his sayings just like the first 12. The advantage that I have is history. The disadvantage I had was culture and religional context, and so I began to change that. All of my formative years, I realized I was raised to be a Pharisee. And during my formative years at church, it was about following the rules. <laughs> Learning to articulate those rules. Get knowledge of him. Second to that was fighting the devil. We were devil fighters at our church. I mean, we looked for devils to fight. And I rebelled from that. One year on a church ski trip, <laughs> you could play cards. The adults on the bus were playing cards. They were playing a game called Rook. I don't know if you know Rook. It's, it's cards, but it's special kind of, it's like Uno cards, but it's special cards for, it's a game like spades, I think. Well, we had regular playing cards with spades, and one of the ladies got offended by that, and she came back and she looked at me, pastor's kid, and said, what would you do if Jesus was standing right here? I said, I'd deal him in. And she said, why? I mean, you just see it coming all over her. I said, well, first of all, then I would ask him what he had in his hand because he can't lie to me. <clears throat> I was that kid. <laughs> I was in trouble more. I was in so much trouble. But we love to fight the devil and we love to confess the rules. Matthew 16, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. We bound and loosed everything. We ran around slinging the blood and binding and loosing. Nothing wrong with it. There may be a sound of a cow being tipped in here. I have a ministry of tipping sacred cows. So if you hear that sound, do not be alarmed. It'll be okay. And if I, if I tilt your neighbor, it's okay. Just reset them. Just love on them and reset them. Jesus will say to Peter in this relationship to what had occurred earlier in this chapter, he says that in answer to something that happened earlier in the chapter. The declaration is a future promise at that point. See, they didn't have that ability to do that at that point. They hadn't been born again yet. Do you understand that none of those disciples were born again? Oh, oh, God. And Mary, here you might be, Mary wasn't Catholic. She's Jewish. And she was in the upper room, so she's a Pentecostal Jew. Jesus. They're running for the doors, Pastor. They're running. <laughs> Most believers that I met were taught that this verse, believe this verse is the blueprint for spiritual warfare. The context does center around his disciples and authority of theirs in the kingdom. <clears throat> but I noticed in that passage, the devil's never mentioned. Huh. Let me give you the historical context. You ready? The historical context for that statement is it's a legal expression in the first century in Judaism. To bind means to restrict, to confine, 
to limit or forbid, to loose is defined as to unbind, untie, or to free. First century historian Flavius Josephus wrote, during the reign of Queen Alexandria of Jerusalem, 76 to 67 BC, before Jesus was born. During that time, she gave the Pharisees a title and authority. You ready? Queen Alexandria said, here's what the Pharisees could do. Now, Jesus will say, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, won't he? She authorized them to be administers of all public affairs. This power allows them to banish and remit whoever they please, and they are to loose and bind. That's where the phrase came from. And it was given, the authority that was given by the queen to the Pharisees. So this explains many statements and interactions with the Pharisees. Matthew 23, Jesus speaks of the Pharisees and says, they bind and lay heavy burdens on the people. Yet he states, my burden is light. The Pharisees used their authority on people in attempting to control behavior by binding. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. They made up a ton of rules for the Sabbath. Uh Uh-oh. Jesus will defeat the devil, take the keys of the kingdom, give them to his followers, and the ability now to operate in binding and loosing. But it's not binding other people. He never gave you authority over people. All right. Let's do a science project. First, let me tell you about this. The priest... Water bottles, red water bottle, blue water bottle. It's, they're the same. It's just I put a food coloring in it. All right? The priest had specific garments that they were wear. Yes? They had to wear linen. Linen bonnets upon their head and linen breeches. And the scripture says they were not to sweat in their ministry. It's the Middle East. Are you kidding me? But they were to wear linen for that purpose. Linen bonnets on their head. These are the regular priests. And linen breeches. And I said, Lord, what does this mean? Linen bonnets because the man of God should always have a cool head. Uh Uh-oh. And the woman of God. Come on now. And linen breeches, meaning passions need to be cool as well. Thank you. (laughs) It's been great speaking with you guys. I'll see if I can get my flight changed. You all right? No, I mean, there's, there's certain standards for operating in the presence. A cool head. Cool passions and no sweat. Ministry should not make you sweat. It shouldn't be toil and labor. Because he took all the toil. He took all the labor. He took all of the the strife. He took everything upon himself. So you minister in a new day. If you're working, 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 working in your ministry, then you're not working in New Testament ministry, New Covenant ministry. Everything changed. See, when Jesus was here, it's a confluence of time. The, the first covenant is going out, and this new covenant is coming in. You right now are living in a confluence of time as well. When the new covenant is going out, The age, you've lived your entire life in the last days. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That was Acts chapter 2. So 2,000 years ago is when the last days began. You also live in the age of grace. And you've lived in the church age, the mystery as well. See, that age is about till the time of the Gentile be fulfilled. You're living in what you're seeing in Israel right now, what you're seeing with gender and all kind of weird stuff going on is the end of this age. 
and the beginning of a new age. The new age will be the millennium, the kingdom. And we're living in that, in that place right now. We're closer to the new one coming in than we are to the old one. My God. Okay, so the, the priest wore linen to stay cool, to not toil. My yoke is easy. All right. The high priest wore that same garment, linen, but he wore an ephod, a breastplate with precious stones on it. He had a special robe. It was a colorful one. It was red and blue and purple and, and gold. Red, blue, purple, gold. You okay? Okay. In the red, the blue, and, blue, and purple, and gold, that represented something. I can take you to the tabernacle they've built right now, and the priests are practicing for the temple. They're practicing right now in Israel, and that's what they're wearing. Red. In Bible, red always signifies man. Red is always man. The blood cried out. Right? When, when, um, when Cain killed Abel. Remember it? Matter of fact, that's wrong. Thank you, Lord. It says in the Hebrew, your brothers or his bloods cry out. It's plural. Not blood, singular. Meaning all of the blood after him that would have been born, that will not be born, is crying out as well. This is why some of the other stuff in our own world. So, the name Adam. The root for the name Adam in Hebrew is Daman. Daman is the word blood. Red. So, this is our natural self. <clears throat> this is you when you were born. This is you before you be were born again. Blue, what is blue? Blue represents <clears throat> heavenly, heavenly things in Hebrew. The sky is blue, right? There's a blue thread on, there's a blue thread on the tallit, on the, on the prayer shawl. A single blue thread that's dyed. And <clears throat> it, it represents heaven. It represents God. And that blue thread is what that woman who had the issue of blood, I don't say she has the woman with the issue of blood because she doesn't have that. The woman who had the issue of blood reached out and touched the hem of his garden. She, she touched that prayer shawl with that blue thread. And this is why when faith touched that, he stopped. Why? Because the scripture prophesying Jesus said that healing will be in his wings. The prayer shawl, the arms of the prayer shawl are called the wings. So healing, she's fulfilling, he is fulfilling, and she is fulfilling that verse that prophesied that the healing would be in his wings. When she touched the wing, hem of his garment, that blue thread, virtue went out of him, fulfilling that. Everything Jesus did, he didn't do, just do. He's led by the Spirit, and he's fulfilling something from the first covenant. So, he's all blue. And his birth, the reason we had to have a virgin birth is a miraculous thing, to get him blue, not red. Because there had been a curse on David's line. And Jesus wasn't born in that line. He was born in the other line. I don't want to take all the time to, to go into all of that. Here's the deal, red. We see Jesus operating from his red nature many times. When he was asleep in the boat, whoop, going up and down, red, he's tired. When he pulls himself away to go pray, he's red and he needs to come back like this. You know what I just said? You just, it just. <laughs> when you're operating in this all week, you may need to drop away, or you, this is why you don't forsake the assembling yourselves together as a manner of some, because you need to go from here to here so that you can go back. So when Jesus is asleep in the boat, okay, the woman. Red touched this. And she got a different result. Let me show you the different result. Red and blue and gold and purple. All right. 
You gotta be smarter than the box. Do you feel like being a, do you feel like, could you assist one more time? You're not going to be the Holy Spirit this time. Okay. Um, I'm asking you because I don't want to spill any of that coloring on the floor and on me. Okay. You're going to undo that. And you're going to, I trust you. Does everybody else? I hope so. Oh, see, so you hit on your finger. Okay, here we go. I want one blue drop in there. Now, you were red. Okay, thank you. Now, oh, oh, oh. Talk amongst yourself for a second. <laughs> thank you. Let's take that away. Okay. Thank you. So, you were red, and when you were born again, heaven came into your spirit, and you became. Purple is the royalty. A royal priesthood. A person that never existed before. I went from red, blue entered me, and I became purple. Now I have authority. See, when Jesus, oh my God. When, when he was asleep like this, red, because he's tired, and they wake him up and he spoke blue to the wind and the waves, he got a purple result. If you'll learn to, even when you're in this status, speak this, you'll get this result. You have to. You absolutely have to. Now, here's my question for you. And this, this might be a cow moment. Brace yourself. Would somebody please, because this person backslid, would somebody please take the blue out? And just leave the red for me. Because I'm talking about your spirit now. I'm not talking about your flesh. Could somebody please, can you do this? Doctors, nurses, anybody? Is there anybody? Can you take the blue out and only leave me the red? Now once his nature came in me. See, once his spirit came in me, this is the way I'm seen now. In the spirit realm, this is what I am. I am seated with him like this. Because this came in me. I'm still living in this. But that will trump this. Everybody around me sees this. I want them to hear that. This is temporary. See, most people don't know the progression of what happened. I was crucified with Christ, Colossians tells us. I was crucified with Christ. I was buried with him. I rose with him. I'm seated with him. And I will reign with him. We've got too many people trying to live here, and they've never established this. They've never established that I was crucified with him. I was See, that's... Crucified with him. Oh, wait, no, wait. That's crucified. Buried with him. And I rose with him. And that's where my righteousness lies. The only sin Jesus ever held was yours. And the only righteousness you ever have is his. And when you become like a Pharisee trying to bind and loose everything and doing things by your own righteousness, you'll, you'll split off into different churches and denominations and camps. And that was never the intention. The intention was for all of us to come into the tabernacle of David yeah. and sit under the shadow of the Almighty yeah. and live from this place. When you learn to live from this place, everybody will be attracted to you and drawn to you and they won't know why. This is no toil and no struggle. Are you okay? Yeah. I didn't even get to the notes, and I'm out of time. Did this help anyone? Yeah. This is what you see of me. Now, let me help you with something. Thank you, Lord. If you continue to look 
at that loved one and only see this. This is the only result you're going to get. Women inside of every man is a king and a fool. Which one will you talk to? Because if you talk to this one, you're going to get more of this one. But if you'll begin to look at this. See, I realized I married a daughter of the king. We made a covenant agreement before we got married. That if at any time in your spirit you have a check, we'll delay this thing or call this off. Now, I made that promise. So guess what happened? It happened. And then God's going to see what I'm going to do. Well, what are you going to do? I said, Michelle, we're putting it on hold. And on the day that we got married, I sent word to her. And I said, what does your spirit say? And what, what if she had said, I'd have called it off. Learn to see people through this. If you'll learn to see, these people are broken. These people only have their own understanding. These people don't have the inside wisdom that you have. If you'll learn to see your office mates and your boss and your manager like only this, you're going to be in trouble. But if you'll learn to see that they could become that, if I'll speak from this place and pray from this place, Somebody asked the question the other day of me. What do you think about, and, and I wanted to say, you Pharisee. <laughs> what do you think about people that they couldn't pray for one hour, but they could fish all night? And he said, priorities matter. And I said, Abba, I want to respond from here. <laughs> Because everything in Greg's wanting to come from here. <laughs> and I heard this. He said, let me tell you what to say. And so my answer was, I never was disappointed or upset at my children when they fell asleep in my arms. This world doesn't hate Jesus. They just never met him. Oh, there are some that do. They don't hate the church. They just grew up in it. You're looking at one of those. They've never experienced this. You know what they've seen? I have 20-somethings in my house. Well, two of them are in college, one's is still in my house. They've seen the same people believing for the same things for decades. They've seen the same people in the same healing lines. They've seen the same things and heard the same things that Jesus is coming back and nothing's ever changed. I'm like, no, 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 no. You're looking at things on a human. You're looking at everything on this timeline. Can I help you with time? We look at prophets. Somebody asked me the other day, what prophet are you under? What prophet speaks into your life? I wanted to say, it's one with a five-fold ministry gift. <laughs> <laughs> Spirit of slap, Greg came up on me. No, 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 no. I'm not led by a prophet. Prophet confirms I'm led by the Spirit. As many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Prophet will confirm. Prophet, well, what about the prophet? And the guy started in with me. What about the prophet that came and wrapped that thing around Paul's hands and said, you're going to be led off into chains? He didn't tell Paul what, he told Paul the bat, but he didn't tell Paul not to do it. Because that's not what the Holy Spirit does. He's not going to tell you to do this or to do that or do this. He's going to, our prophet won't. A Holy Spirit will. And all of the promises of God are yes and amen. Any single people in the room? Any single folks? No? Well, thank you. There's a couple of three. You, everybody, boy, all the single ones started looking around at all the others that raised their hand. <laughs> I wasn't asking you to window shop. 
I mean, okay, take advantage of it. But listen, when you're praying about a mate, when you're praying about something like that, if you pray, but I love him, I love him, I love him. He's not a believer, but I love him. He's not a believer. He's not, I love him. It's the only thing God said not to do. Be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. All of the promises of God are yes and amen. If you ask him about, I, it's the desire of my heart to marry him. Not me. You understand what I'm saying? He's going to say, Sure. Why? Because that's his desire too. If you pray anything according to his will, it's his will if you want to get married. This is why you've got to watch that you don't pray amiss. This is why you've got to be in places like this that operates in this. Because when you're in places that operates like this, this will become second nature to you. I know there's people in here that probably think, I don't understand these people. I, I love Pastor, but he's all the time talking about God talking to me. He's never talked to me. What does he sound like? My own kids have done that to me. God's never spoken to me. I go, yeah, he has, all the time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to submit to you that God has spoken to every last one of you. Whether you realize it or not, he did. You want proof? No, they don't care. Everybody went red on me. <clears throat> we need lights in your, in your building. Red light, blue light, purple light. This is, you come in, red lights, and I want to put blue in you, and you're going to leave here purple. <laughs> the little young man who was going to be a prophet, his mom brings him. He's, he's a, Samuel is with Ellie. Ellie is Eli. Sorry. Ellie? Ellie May was a prophet? I didn't know that. <laughs> In Hebrew, Eli is Ellie. And he goes to him and says, you called me. Remember that? Yeah. Kept going in there. You called me, you called me, you called me, you called me, you called me. And he said, no, I didn't. And then finally, in the last time, Ellie wakes up and goes, duh, it's God. Next time, say, here am I, Lord, right? He thought it was his rabbi. Thought it was his pastor. He thought it was the prophet. To him, it sounded like that. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a situation or thinking about something or in your day and you heard him? In your mind or whatever, you heard him? You heard God? Did I just say you were God? No. But he speaks through leadership. He thought it was Eli. Have you ever been in a situation and heard your mother's voice? Did I get more people to respond on that? You, you heard your father's voice. You heard a principal or a teacher or something. You heard their voice in your head. You heard God. I didn't even get to the notes. Lord, why would you have me print those? I'm not blaming you. That's Greg. That was red. You know. Learn to pray that. Let having put a filter on you. What's red and what's blue and what's purple in your eye? Purple gets results every time. Purple can't not get results. Psalm 133 says... Yeah, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Let's, let's, let's put our eyes on it. And then I'll be done. I promise. I know. Thank you. You say that, but the rest of them are in red mode right now. Psalm 133. Behold, oh no, it's wrong. Psalm 133, a song of decrees of David. See what I did there? Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. 
It's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down into the skirts of his garments. Okay, let's stop right there. Let's start. Okay, so we're going to pour the oil on the head. We got a, anybody got a big old jar of oil anywhere? Okay, I won't do that then. I got, I got food coloring and water. No, I'm not going to pour it on anybody's head. When they anointed people, may I borrow your forehead? When they anointed people, they didn't do this little thing like we do. Boom. It went on the head. Who's the head of the church? Jesus Christ. No matter where you're at in the body of Christ, you got greasy. It hit the head, the beard, the shoulders, all the way down. Even if you're the little toe in the body of Christ, you're anointed. With the same anointing that's on the head. Okay, it, people, they take showers in Lubbock, right? When you, get out of the, when you get out of the shower, what's the first thing you dry off when you grab the towel? Your head. Who said that? You? Why, would you, why do you do that? Why do you dry your head off first? You have a lot of hair. What happens? So if you dried your knees off first, the water from your head would get on your knees again. You always dry the head first. God will always speak through authority of the head first. This is the head of this congregation. Not a board and big wheels. <laughs> I'm making friends. From the head to the beard to the shoulders to the knees all the way down. You're anointed as long as you're in that covering. You're anointed in him. Right? And it says in unity. There's our problem. There's our problem in our local church. I don't know about this one. But there's our problem in Lubbock. There's our problem in Dallas-Fort Worth. Oh my God, that's the problem in Dallas-Fort Worth. That and the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> and now the Texas Rangers. Just two outs. They just needed two outs. I know, I know, I know. I never should have taught that to my children because they do that. They'll go, red alert, red alert, red alert. <laughs> See, a lot of preachers preach from the red. And they preach condemnation. If you learn to preach from the blue. See, you come in red. Because you carry all the stuff with you. See, that's the problem with the churches. Okay, yeah, I'll do it. Second Peter. Keep your finger on, on Psalm 133. I'm not done. You said you were done. This ties to it. Give me grace. Second Peter chapter 1. Peter's writing, Wherefore I will not ne be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in this present truth. That's our age. That's the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Jesus wept over Jerusalem because they missed their day of visitation. We've got believers all over the world missing their day of visitation because they've divided themselves into little camps. Jay, what's your bank? You have a, just give me one bank of yours that's a bank. Prosperity, Prosperity Bank. Do they have more than one location in this town? Which one did you open it at? Like a cent, like on university. on university. Where's another one at? Ninety uh, eighth and Quaker is another one. Have you ever gone into that one, or have you ever used ninety eighth and Quaker? Okay, did the university one ever call you because you used the ninety eighth and Quaker one and say, "Did we do something wrong? You used that other one. Did did we offend you somehow? Why did you go there?" They don't care. They're a branch office. 
If every pastor could just get the realization that all of them are branch offices of the same king. And we just work together. And I don't have to try to take people from you or worry about you taking people from me. And we can come together in unity because he's anointed all of us. Jesus, I'm about to get the preach and I, it was too late. It's too late for that. Back to Psalm 133. Psalm 133. Psalm 133. So we got all of this grease running down on the whole garment, right? Even to the skirts of his garment. And then David writes, as the dew of Hermon, Hermon, that's the highest mountain in Israel in the north, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. I get it with the greasy head, the whole body thing in unity. But now you're telling me unity is somehow tied to mountains. I don't get it. Why did we change? That's a drastic change. I mean, little children or something like that, that would have made sense. But mountains? One in the north of Israel and one in Jerusalem? Here's what the rabbis do. When they come up against something in Scripture they don't understand. Do you know what they do? The scribes and the Orthodox rabbis, what they do, because you've got to understand, they don't have the Spirit within. All the Spirit would come upon in the first covenant. They push the Torah scroll back. And they push themselves back. And they began to say, just like Avram, Abraham, you would not leave him in the dark concerning Lot. And you would not leave him, you, would, you, you argued with him per adventure if there's 50 and 40 and 30, remember that? You, you revealed it to your friend Abraham, and I am the seed of Abraham. You're about to reveal something to me that I never knew before. And do you know what they do? They step back and they pray that you're about to reveal something. And they'll tell the other guys, I don't understand this. The Lord is about to reveal something. And they will begin to praise and they'll all stop. And the entire room of them will stop and they'll begin to praise together. And they'll begin to dance. And they sacrifice a praise because they don't understand what they just read. But we know your character and your nature. You're going to reveal something to us. And they'll just begin to do a little dance. And they'll do a little more dance. And they'll just begin. To, and they'll keep doing it till they get the answer. That's, so good. That's what they do. I've watched it happen. They do a little happy dance. And some of you, when you come to a place where you don't understand because you're operating in red, if you'll just take a moment and back up and do yourself a little dance and a little praise because your father is not going to leave you without an answer and you're going to get a purple and it'll forever change your life. Okay, so, so here's the answer. Here's the answer. You ready? Psalm 133. Why mountains? I've been to Mount Hermon. As the dew of Hermon, Hermon, and the dew, it's in the dew, and it's about unity. There's water vapor in this air right now. You ready? You about ready to praise? I'm not going to do these notes tonight. You about ready to praise? Whatever you guys do to get ready, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. It's about unity and your place in the body. And then he switched it to a mountain. But he says, as the dew on Mount Hermon, as the dew on Mount Zion. There's water vapor in this room right now. If we could get the temperature to the right temperature, unity is the key and dew is the key. If we could get this room's humidity and temperature correct, we would have water up here. There is a temperature in the spirit. The day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, we're all in one accord, in unity, and suddenly they got to that place. Same thing in chapter 4, same thing at Cornelius' house. 
as you get to that place, that's when it suddenly happens. The place will be shaken. There's a temperature in unity where God manifests. Even heathen get in unity. He shows up. Yes, true. Tower of Babel. The, the people are one. Let us go and see this thing. When you get in unity, it's the most attractive thing to the spirit and presence of God. He suddenly will appear, even when heathen do it. That's what you've tapped into here. When we get in unity with one another in this room, you'll have purple all over the place. You won't be able to hold the people that will want to come. That's what that word was for him today. I heard it, the interpretation. I heard the interpretation in Hebrew and then wrote as fast as I could. He didn't speak Hebrew. I heard it. If we'll get ourselves in a position to not respond from here, to realize we live here, we carry the dirt of here every day, we come to this place of worship and he washes us in the word and the spirit is here and we then step into this, which automatically makes us that. If we'll learn to take this to Lubbock and the surrounding communities, you won't be able to hold them. The land you now have is not big enough. That came from right there. Jesus. <laughs> that was not from my head. Somebody better start praying for a minute. We just hit a point. Do you, did you feel it? He's here. Yeah, okay, Lord, thank you. The day is coming. This is the seal of our covenant our new covenant. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit. We live in this. The day will come when this will put off. We don't know what we will be, but we'll be like him. Your physical body in the very near future is going to be this. You'll have a glorified physical body. Jesus has that now. And the he gave you as a down payment of your covenant the Holy Spirit, which is blue and purple. If you'll learn to live by the Spirit, for many are, are the sons of God are called, or the, they, yeah, that one, about the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. This is our day of visitation. This is a purple place. Well, stand with me if you would. This is how you're going to live it out. Learn not to speak from the red. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. What are you telling him to do? Talk blue. Jesus said, I hadn't seen faith like that in all of Israel. Because he had never learned to be excluded. He was a Gentile. His name was Cornelius. Centurion. Let's praise him for a minute. Come on, just praise him for a minute. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Are you going to pray for the sick? You've already been prayed for. Blue went into your physical red. And purple is waiting to be released. Release it. Speak to your body right now. You talk to it. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm going to do. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I'm supposed to do. Glory. Okay, I got to get up here where I can see you. 
keep standing. The number one thing Jesus understood before he ever healed a single person, before ever any miracle ever happened, you know what it was? He was the beloved of his father. He knew he was loved. Some of you feel no love. You haven't felt love in a long time. <laughs> when I was here last, I, the Lord had me pray for bruises and, and inner wounds. And people remember that? That's what he reminded me of. Every one of you are anointed. If you're born again, who's born again in the room? Anybody not put their hand up? Look, 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 let's get them. Sorry, I apologize. apologize. Here's what I want you to do. If you're going through something, physical, mental, spiritual, financial, something in your body, something in a loved one. All of you are anointed. We taught our children in Children's Church in San Diego when I was pastor. We taught them how to do this on the job training. And one day, one of the little girls, the guy played the bass guitar in our church. On the way home from church, he had a heart attack in the car and his little eight or nine year old daughter. He wasn't feeling good, so he had his wife drive. He was sitting in the passenger seat. She climbed out of the back seat and laid her hands on her dad and said, in the name of Jesus, you will live and not die. He's still here. But it was, a, it was listen to me, it was a massive heart attack. It was massive. They drove him to the hospital, of course. But a little kid did it. And then one day I had the Lord say to me, bring the kids in and let them pray for all the sick people. And I went, what? Red. Here's what I want you to do. If, you're, if you've got something going on in your life, in your family, whatever it is, I don't care. Do not be ashamed. We're family in here. Are we not? Raise your hand wherever you're at. Raise your hand. People with their hands up. Okay, those of you around them. My God, has everybody got their hand up? No, there's a few. Well, Lord, I'm still going to do what you said do. Find somebody with their hand up. Those of you around them. Find out what it is. And you lay your hands on them and you begin to pray over them. And then I'm going to be led where I'm supposed to go. Come on, do it. Come on, I, I ordain you. How about that? I anoint you. Find somebody with their hand up and you begin to pray for them. There was hands up right here, these two. Who, who else had a hand up? Come on, pray. I want to hear you. Pray for them. There's two over here. Somebody pray for these two right here. Pray for these two right here. This is, this is a more, there's one back there that doesn't have anybody praying with him. Sir, did you have your hand up? The, the man right there in the ball cap? Is his hand up? Your hands are up? Okay, once you prayed for them, go to those guys. I need people back there. Come on, pray with them. Decree the word over, speak blue over them. one for another. That's what we're doing right now. Well, I want you to do it. This is what I heard the Lord say to do. I speak life. I speak blue over you. The kingdom of God expanding in you in your workplace. Favor on your job. I see marriages being restored. I see hearts being turned. I see children coming home. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying.
Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Who was in pain when you were when you were in here? Who was in pain tonight? Who are you? Because I know I know you were. Who was in pain? You? Are you in pain? You're in pain now. Where? You sure? Okay. Come here. Can you come here? We'll see. On the way here, Father. On the way here, Father. On the way here, Father. On the way here. On the way here. On the way here. How's the pain? Oh, it hurts. What's wrong? You don't know, but your back hurts. It's hurting now. You sure? You don't know if it hurts. You know it hurts. Does it hurt? Wait, raise your hands. If you're not praying for somebody, reach your hands out toward you. Speak blue. Speak the word. Yes. 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 Yes, above only, not beneath. Yes. He took your pain. He took your shame. He carried it all. They beat his back wide open so that yours wouldn't hurt. What's your name? What's his name? John. 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 How's your back? Does it hurt, John? John, does your back hurt? Oh, Lord, no. No. You sure? What happened to it? I'm here to Jesus. Well, what, ha- what happened to it? God touched me. I never touched him. None of you touched him. I had him walk down here and I prayed blue all the way here. I said, Lord, on the way. He healed them as they went on the way. I said, on the way, heal his back. John, how's your, what are you doing bending over your back hurts? John, if I was in the Baptist church, what would they do with this? What are you guys looking at? What are we doing? This just happened. That just happened. And nobody laid hands on him. Because you can't say it's some anointing Greg carries. No, it's the same anointing you carry when you laid hands on people. Now, something happened with the two of you. I saw it. I don't know you. Are you married? You were? What? I don't know what happened, but something happened. I don't know what you agreed about or prayed about. I don't need to know. But I know it's done. I know something happened. Something broke that's been on there a long time. Because I saw it in your eyes. And nobody laid hands on you and purple happened. This is how you're going to take this to Lubbock. You can walk through the stores and not have to lay hands on a single person and have a John. Or have that. The shadow 
of purple healed them. The glory of the Most High is all over the two of you. Can you see it or is it just me? It's all over you. That's read my lips. John. Hey, John. Yes. How you doing? I feel good. How's your back? It's great. We've been getting information and we're getting knowledge about uh, and we, we, don't, we don't know what it looks like. But his glory. We, we, but remember what the heaviness of His glory is not something man can do. The heaviness of His glory is what He does. Man can have the anointing and manifest laying on the hands and laying healings in, but God's glory does it without anybody's help because it's His glory. And His glory is presence. That's what we experienced. People being touched by God's glory. And so it's touched because no one did that but God. And in those who are being touched, know, know that it was that glory. That we're learning more and more as we're on this journey for His presence, but His presence is His glory. And that's our direction. That's our destination is to find more because what happened here is all the ingredients that's in the glory that he's trying to get to us. Because then we appear in unity and oneness. His glory comes and he touches people's lives. And it's not man. It's God's glory. We've been blessed. 
blessed to see his presence presented between two men who represents the five-fold ministry. See, it's time for the church to start fulfilling His Word. And when we do that, it's like Acts and the, the one that's present. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. I said we'll walk together to find that glory that He wants us to walk into. I don't know what that is. I don't know if I'll ever know. Like we don't know without somebody touching that power of His glory touching people. What happened in our services the first night, wasn't it? That we said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. But he said, also, there's a demonstration. Tonight, we had a demonstration of his glory. Just, just a piece of it. Because we can't contain all of his glory. There's no way. But we're getting fragments, kind of fragments of His glory that's coming because we have a heart. We've, we're, we've been trained. We've been, we're being equipped to say, we want to be a house that worships Him in spirit and truth. We didn't know back years, a couple of years ago, when we just that, that we would be getting in the direction of his glory. So he's been progressing us to that place. And he's validating and confirming it through the vessels that he sends. He sent us a message. He sent us a message just like he is giving the prophets that prophesy. He also sends a teacher. He sends an evangelist that said, you're on the right track. You're not there yet, but you're on the right track. And so we're getting into this place. This is where we're getting. We're not quite there. We can get there. We can be there in places, but... but <clears throat> See, this bottle... It's not half empty. It's full. And that's where we're heading. In His fullness of His glory. We want to be full. When you come in the presence, it's about you but sometimes it's brand new for me it's brand new because of uh, I don't even know how to explain it but his presence is so unexplainable but you know in your senses his presence and we're going to continue to do this and if you have if, you, if you're attending another church, you're member of another church, you listen to Spirit. I'm not asking you to come here. I'm asking you to listen to Him to come to listen to a messenger. I'm not asking you to switch church. I'm not asking you to be a part of this church. That's not my point. I want you to have an opportunity to get some of this by listening to a vessel who says he's in here for the moment. And that's who we're going to be. All we're going to do is provide a place for His presence for whoever seeks it. We're not trying to steal sheep. We're not trying to do anything else. We're just trying to be God's presence and have His presence. So if you come and you go, it's not going to affect us. 
But if you come in one way and you go the other thing, where he's going to get the glory. Understand? God bless. I, I, you, you know, when you come in this morning, there's no way that you can quit. How do you close something like this? You, that's exactly right. And so what happened is you're walking away in purple. But it's your choice whether you want to stay here or come to here. When you walk out of here, it's your choice. Do I want to remain here and do this or do I want to go here? It's your choice. And when you walk in the choices, isn't it good that you'll be able to teach this so that you'll see this? Well, walk with Him. He's with you. He's in you. So go from this place into your car with Him. Turn on the ignition and keep on walking with Him. But in the morning, we're going to be back searching His presence and allowing Him to have His way in our place. Amen? All right. We are dismissed. We'll see you tomorrow.